Okay, so this video, I'm gonna talk about how to edit videos. Um, it's, a, it's a synopsis that will enable a beginner to start editing and putting quality stuff on YouTube. So before I get started, I just wanna say, I do edit videos professionally. I do, I edit videos for wedding videographers. They go out, shoot the footage, you know, they send the footage to me, I edit it, they pay me. So technically I'm a professional editor. I went to college for TV broadcasting in 2004, so a long time ago. Um, I've worked at Nesson and Fox Sports, and I've been using Final Cut Pro since I was in freshman year of high school, which was 1999. Um, so pretty much when it first came out, it was like 99, 2000 or so is when I started using that. So I've been doing it for a long time. And before I go on any further, the absolute first fundamental crux to being a good editor is reading a lot of books because editing is the same as writing a story. When I was a kid, I used to read Stephen King books all the time and I became very good at writing myself because I was reading books written by professional authors. So I became very good at writing stories. I got A's in all of my writing assignments and I've been a good writer ever since. Well, editing and writing are really very similar because when you're writing a story you're using you know, a pencil and paper or a typewriter on a computer and you're typing out your thoughts in a constructive coherent way using words whereas with video you're putting your thoughts in a coherent constructive way on a timeline using video it's really the same as writing a story so from a fundamental perspective, if you really want to get good at editing, learn how to write. Um, read stories, learn how to construct a story, and that will help you to become a better editor later on. I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro, but you can use practically whatever software you want. Even the free stuff is good enough to make good YouTube videos. You don't need to spend money on good software. And practically all the software, as a matter of fact, all the software I've ever used, which is a decent amount, works the same fundamental way. You have your, your bin where you store your clips, your viewers where you look at the final product, uh, your effects tabs, and you have your timeline where you put your clips in. Pretty much every software out there works similar to that. So you can learn one type of video editing software and apply what you know to virtually any other uh, type of software out there. So even if you're not using Final Cut Pro, you can apply just to Windows Movie Maker or whatever you're using. But step number one to editing videos is to organize your clips. You can see I have a finder window right here. Uh, you have a similar window on, edit, on uh, Linux, Linux and Windows computers as well. You can see I have all these folders and on a hard drive. This is Greenland Paddle. This is the one I'm going to be using. So if I double click that, I already saved a project file to this folder. This is the project that's open right now. And I have all my clips are in here too. And you notice I named the clips beginning, ending, holding under the paddle. These would be middle clips. Um, so the, the clips are named except for this one, which is blue, which I would normally not use. But I'm going to use it just to show you how to use a crappy clip. So you see, my, I'm just going to go through the windows. Remember, most editing programs are fairly similar. You have your bin right here, which has all your clips in it. Oh, see, all your clips are in the bin. And this window right here is a waveform monitor that's going to allow me to edit the color. We're not, gonna, we're not really going to use this yet. So we'll talk about this one later. This is a, a viewer window that allows me to watch the clips that are in the bin. And it will also allow me to watch the clips that are in the timeline too once I put them down there. Then you have the inspector window, which is uh, this window here. This is going to have all the parameters of the clips in this window here. So you have you know video, audio, info. This is this um, clip is 1080p. Your 1920 1920s 1080p, 29.97 frames per second. So. It's a good idea to know what type of clips you're working with, so that way you can set the project settings to those clips. Although most um, editing programs will set them automatically, it still is a good idea. So step number two 
or step number one, shall I say, is whatever editing program you're working with, go on YouTube and watch some tutorial videos and learn how to use it. And then come back to this. And, you know, you're probably going to have a timeline down here, which is where you're going to put your clips. And this is an effects bin right here, which is how you add your effects and everything. So let's start adding clips. I'm going to go to this clip of me holding the paddle, talking about it. So let's play it. Now, this is just me, you know, walking. On most editing programs, J, K, and L is your play buttons. J rewinds, K stops it, and L plays it. And you can fast forward with those buttons too. So I just started talking. So I'm going to rewind to before I start talking, hit I, which sets an end point. Then I'm going to hit play. In this video, we're going to talk about Greenland paddles versus non Greenland paddles. And I just screwed up, so video, we're gonna talk. so I just, I'm just going to set a new end point. Rewind to before I start talking, hit I for N, hit play again. In this video, we're going to talk about Greenland paddles versus Greenland paddles. Blah, 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 blah. Great, perfect. So I hit O for out. And now you want to insert this clip into the timeline. With most programs, you can drag the clip and drop it in or you can hit certain quick key combinations. With Final Cut Pro, one of them is W. If I hit W, then it clips right here in the timeline. And I'm gonna zoom into this clip by holding the command key and plus and hitting the, uh, I'm screwing up here. I'm gonna zoom in by holding command and hitting plus. So now I just zoomed into the clip. This is my first clip on the timeline, is right here. Not a very good clip, and I would never use this clip in an actual video, but there it is. I, I had this on here for a purpose. So, most people, they see that this clip is blue, and they will immediately start color correcting the clip. But I think that's a mistake, because before you do any technical stuff like that, you should lay down all your clips, get them all in chronological order to where you want them, and then start cutting and trimming the clips, because it's entirely possible you might cut this clip entirely from the video before it's done. So why would you waste your time color correcting it if it might not even make it to the end anyway? So ignore the fact that it's blue for now. We'll leave our timeline there. And till, till typically with the videos, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is gonna be an intro of sorts, which I'm talking about the Greenland paddle, and I'm explaining that's what I'm gonna be talking about in the video. The middle, you have your meat, which is, I'll explain why the Greenland paddle's better, then at the end I'll wrap it up somehow, and that's basically it for telling the story in the video. Just put the shots down in a chronological order that you want to see them. So next, let's talk about one reason why the Greenland paddle's better, and, or I'm going to talk about how to hold it in this clip, like this. So I'm rewinding, hit play. Get the Greenland paddle, you actually rewind. So I'm gonna hit I for in, and now I'm gonna play it. With the Greenland paddle, you might be tempted to hold it right on the loom like this, whereas the, the loom is the uh, section in the middle here that's rounded. You might be tempted to do that, similar to a European paddle, but that's wrong. What you want to do is see you have the ears right here, the part that kind of goes up into the blade. You want to make an OK sign with your fingers and move it to the edge of the ear and drape your fingers over the blade itself. So you would be holding it like this. Okay, so like this, I hit O for out, hit W to put it in the timeline. Here it is. With the Greenland. So there's the cut. And, you know, put this at the end again. Uh, and, you know, typically I would have, you know, more... Uh, clips in there about why a Greenland paddle is better, but uh, let's see if I can get anything else like that. Yeah. Oh, right over the, the ears there. And you can shave this, you can make this whatever shape you want to where it's comfortable for your fingers. Another advantage of the Greenland paddle is you can customize it. So that's an advantage. So I'm going to put that part in. Hit I in. Another advantage of the Greenland paddle is you can customize it. Uh, whatever. Hit O for out and W to throw it in the timeline. So there it is. Here, here it is. This. Another advantage. And there it goes. So that's in there now. And um, then I would have some sort of wrap up for the end. All right, everybody. I think I made a clear case that these are just 
better, flat out better. And, you know, I, I proved it. I hit it out of ballpark. It's so much better. And I think you want to give yourself the opportunity to try one of these, especially if you want to buy another paddle, but you don't want to drop $450 on a quality one. If you want to take the time and try to make one yourself. Yeah, that's getting redundant. And I'll, you know, I guess I don't it. No, you want so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it O or out right at the end of quality one, and I'll put this in there. Now let's see what else I got here. If you want to take the time and try to make one yourself, uh, there's links you can download. It's actually a YouTube video. I'm not gonna put any of this in the actual video. I wish I made that video, but I didn't. Someone beat you to it. Shows you exactly how to make them. A block plane, a shintu. You'll find out what a shintu is. We try to make one of these. It's just a wood rasp, Japanese one. Need a, a handsaw, sandpaper, tongue oil. Yeah, about it. Right. To make one of these, and twenty five bucks, and it's about as lightweight. If you use Western Red Cedar, that is, it's about as lightweight as a carbon fiber paddle. Is gonna now, I'm going to fast a forward to a lot of this so by hitting L. I think to try. I'll give it a little while. You can use that as an extra paddle on your deck at least. You can have a dual blade anything paddle to use uh, if you want to. But a lot, a lot of people are starting to switch to them. I think for good reason. Uh, and some of the reasons that you want to outline in the video, some of the pros of it, they're just easier on your shoulders. I think they really are. They're easier to go long distance with. So that's the brief. Here's the side. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit I where I start saying, so that's the Greenland paddle. This is going to wrap the video up. That's the Greenland paddle for you. Thanks for watching, spreading the video. I want to see what the Greenland paddle up is. Okay, O for out. That's it. So that's the end of it. So okay. now I have some clips on the timeline <laughs> roughly in the order that I want them. So now step two is to literally watch this video from start to finish, and then you're going to start cutting stuff out that doesn't need to be there, and you're going to fix stuff that looks weird in the timing aspect. We're not even going to get to the audio with the fact that this is blue yet. We're going to fix the timing of the video. So this is one of the keys to making good videos. The higher the quality that you want the video, the more times you have to watch the video in its entirety before you export it and make your final project to put on YouTube. The more times you watch it, the more stuff you're going to see that shouldn't be there. Because the goal is to edit this down as much as possible. Get as much boring, redundant crap out of the video as much as you can and just make this... So you get your points across quickly and orderly so people don't get bored. In fact, you're probably getting bored listening to me right now, so I'm going to move on to the next step. Let's play the whole video from start to finish, and we're going to fix stuff along the way. In this video, we're going to talk about green. So you can see right from the beginning, I kind of like stumble around a little before I start talking. I don't need all that. Okay, good enough. So this right here, we're going to start trimming. So you'll notice I have a pointer right here, but when I move this to the edge of the clip, it turns into this trim tool. And if I click and drag, it, it uh, trims away that excess. Then I can just click this here, hit delete, and it moves the whole thing back. So that's how you trim. In this video, we're going to talk about green panels. Really yeah, and you know, I don't need me stepping towards the camera, and I, I really don't need blah, blah, blah either, but we'll leave it because who cares. So I just trimmed all that off, hit this, hit delete, and move everything back. And remember, when you, when you make an edit, you always start playing the video from before the edit. Don't start playing it at the edit point because you want to see what the cut looks like before you move on. So move the cursor back here and play it from back here. With a Greenland paddle, you might be tempted to hold it right on the loom like this, whereas the, the loom is the uh, section in the middle here that's rounded. You might be tempted to do that, similar to a European paddle, but that's wrong. What you want to do is see you have the ears right here, the part that kind of goes up into the blade. You want to make an OK sign with your fingers and move it to the edge of the ear and drape your fingers over the blade itself. So you would be holding it like this. Another advantage of the Greenland paddle is you can customize it. You know, honestly, that section, that whole section right there, another advantage of Greenland paddle, it just looks kind of dumb. So I'm just going to get rid of it. It's gone. And now to move the paddle back here, hit play. So, so you would be holding it like this. Now, I certainly don't need all this. 
Do I? Absolutely not. All right, everybody. So I just started uh, talking. We made our wrong. Rewind. Now I, I stopped talking. Hit stop it. And see, I got my trim tool. See, it turned into the trim tool. Grab, click. Most video editing programs work the same way. So don't worry. I just trim that out. Play it from back so, here. So you would be holding it like this. All right, everybody. I think I made a clear case that these are just better. Flat out better. And, you know, I, I proved it. I hit it out of all parties. It's so much better. And I think you want to give yourself the opportunity to try one of these, especially if you want to buy another paddle, but you don't want to drop $450 on a quality one. That's the Greenland paddle for you. Thanks for watching, spreading the video. I want to. Yeah, you know, this is kind of a cruddy looking jump cut. $450 on a quality one. That's the Greenland paddle for you. Thanks for watching. Now, you know, if I wanted to, I could throw some sort of wacky um, dissolve in there. But, you know, they're not really necessary. But let's just look at some of the various transitions. See, this tab here is for transitions. These are all wipes. This stuff is really pretty old school. But if I grab a wipe and throw it in there, it's going to do it. Quality one. You know, that mean, that look kind of dumb. I don't know. I, I, I never really use these because nobody does anymore. Let's just throw that in there. Yeah, so you see, and then, you know, the, the one you typically use is a, is a dissolve. dollars on a quality one. But you know what? The truth is, is transitions are very old school. Um, if you watch YouTube videos and you watch TV... For the most part, it's straight cuts. It might there might not be a jump cut like this. They might go to a different shot, but it's you know, know for the most part, straight you cuts. Don't want to drop four hundred fifty dollars on a quality one. That's the Greenland paddle for you. Now that actually would fly like that on YouTube, but I, I really I would love to fix that. You know, typically to fix that, you need something called B roll um, to put on top, which I don't think I really have any in this video. Yeah. So I really don't. So, but for the most part, jump cuts are fine. And this is the modern way to edit is to, is to just leave the jump cuts with no transition. So I wouldn't even bother. Like something like this is a perfectly fine jump cut. You can get like this. Because it goes from one shot to another. This jump cut right here, not so good. Because I'm in the same spot. But there's really nothing I can throw over. You know, typically... I would throw some just oh, just for the hell of it. I want. I really want to show you what I would do Design. if I had the footage. So I'm just going to grab some footage, and I hit Q to put it on top. So typically, if I had B-roll, something where, where I'm not in the footage. You know, I really want. To, I wish I. I wish I had the footage to show you here. Do I have a picture? I wish I had a picture, thumbnail. Yeah, I don't know, I'll just throw this in there for the heck of it. So I have some swirly ocean thing here. But if I had a picture of just my kayak, I could, I don't know, throw that in there or something just to, just to cover that crappy jump cut. But whatever. It, it's fine to just leave that in there. So you, um, you, this is, this is it. So you throw the clips down the timeline. You get them in the order you want them. You trim them up. Now you can start fixing other stuff, like the fact that this clip is blue. This needs some desperate work. This just doesn't work with the rest of these clips. I didn't white balance the camera with my bad. So how would you fix this? Well, every program's different, but they all have color correcting capability. With Final Cut Pro, you click on the clip, which clicking on it automatically opens it in the inspector here. See? And you have the video tab. And this is a color corrector. So I'm going to click that. It opens up a color correcting tab. I'm going to use these scopes here to correct the color. I'm going to hit RGB Parade, which is all my colors. You can immediately see it's way too blue. So if you click this here, this is a highlight. I'm going to start bringing the blue down. I'm going to bring the green down with it by dragging this around. You can see it's already looking a lot better. 
Now, if you look at this clip here, it's clearly a lot brighter than this clip. So let's just look at the exposure real quick. So the exposure is Luma. Now, this is the midtones. See right around here, these, these lines here. It takes a while to, to really learn how to read these scopes. But my midtones are here. And, and this clip, you can, you can see me. And I'm up here. And you can tell that's me because when you play the video, Greenland you can see it moving. Be tempted to hold it. See it moving? That's me moving. Now down here, I'm over here. I'm up here on this one. And I'm down here on this one. So, you know, I could uh, bring the uh, exposure up a bit. Now that's that's the global control. That's too much. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, let's get this back at zero. Here's the mid-tone. So I'm bringing the mid-tones up a bit on the exposure to try and brighten this clip up. And you can see it's still too blue. So let's go to, you know, I could spend all, well, not all day, but I could spend a lot of time correcting this. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the process of editing. Um, you can see this, this clearly looks better already. And these right here are just other... Um, settings you can mess with. These are the mid-tones and, and the darks and everything. But this clearly looks, this looks a lot better already. Now, if I was making a real professional video, I'd spend a lot more time working on this. But this is before and this is after. So it's it's improved and it, it looks kind of like it goes with the other clip now. So I just collected, I corrected the color in that clip and now let's work on the audio because all these other clips look fine. I'm not concerned about the color on them. Well, you know, before I do move on to the, to the other um, clips, I just do want to mention one thing. You're looking at the Luma setting. This is the brightness of the clip. 100 IRE is typically about the brightest that you want the subject to be, which I'm the subject. So up here is about the brightest you want, it, and down here is where you want the blacks. So you don't, you typically don't want them too much lower because if you um, lower the blacks too much, it's going to start crushing all the color out of the blacks. So it just kind of gets smushed when you lower that. And the same thing with, I want to get that right back at zero. Okay. And the same thing with the highlights. If you just see like they're all getting crushed. You watch this up here. They're all getting just smushed. So that's, so you want to be careful of that. You got to keep them below that line where they all just get smushed like that. So try to keep it around 100 and around zero. And the mid-tones, you typically want them up around 75 or so for the mid-tones. Uh, right around here, between 50 and 75 or so for the mid-tones. It's typical. Okay, so now let's do the audio. So most of your clips are going to look more like this with a video clip up here than a separate audio track for probably two audio. It will be an audio here and an audio below it because there's two channels. Final Cut Pro puts them in one by default. But there's a couple ways you can edit the audio. If this is too uh, loud, you can take the slider. You see how my, my cursor turns into this up and down arrow? You can take this and move it up and down. This would be increasing the audio levels. That would be decreasing them. Zero is normal. That's the normal level. You can create keyframes in Final Cut Pro. You hold the Option key and you click. Your editing program might be different. You might want to right-click over that line. But with these keyframes, I can move the audio up and down individually. See? So this is all getting moved. That's low. This is high. That's low again. That's high. That's keyframes. I'm going to undo all that. But you know, the real crux to editing the audio is this is your, your audio scope over here on your right side. You must never let the audio get above zero. If it's above zero, then it's over-modulated and it's going to sound terrible. If it's way down here, it's too low and it's going to sound terrible. Ideally, the audio is bouncing around above minus six and below zero. It's going to be bouncing around here ideally. So let's play and see where it is. So this clip here is quiet. So I can raise the audio just like this, or ideally, if your editing program has what's called a limiter filter, then you're in luck, because that is one hell of a filter. 
Uh, prior to this, you had to keyframe the audio, and it just was a real nightmare with a long video. But with this, I'm going to click the uh, effects and go to all the audio and levels, and I'm going to drag the limiter filter in this. And now I'm going to go to my audio tab in the inspector. My computer's being slow since I'm using a screen capture program. Sorry about that. You can see here's the limiter filter, and you click this, and this is the um, how you uh, manipulate the filter. So this is the final output, zero decibel. I'm going to set that at minus two. I want minus two to be the loudest that this clip gets. And this is the gain. So what this is going to do is it's going to bring up the levels on the quiet parts of the clip, and it's going to bring down the levels on the loud part. It is the perfect filter for editing audio. So play this clip. I want to see the audio bouncing around in here because this is what is clipping off is when it's bouncing in here, which means it's bringing up the low parts. So let's play it again. Bring the, the gang way up. See, the fact that there's audio bouncing in here means it's clipping some stuff off, which is good enough. So now you're going to hear this is louder. See the levels? The levels are up here now. That's where I want them. So now I would uh, then take the limiter filter and I would put it on all of these clips and that's going to fix the audio across the board for everything. So let's put the limiter filter on this one and let's open it. For some reason it keeps putting on the yellow screen. Again, I'm going to set this to minus two. That's the loudest I want it to be. And this one, I'm not going to bring the gain up nearly as much. Greenland paddle, you might be tempted to hold it. Now, right I don't even need to. Like this, whereas the, the womb is the uh, second. So with this one, I don't even need to bring it up. As you can see, it's cutting it's stuff off here. You might be tempted to do that. I'll bring it up a little. Similar to European paddle, but that's wrong. What you want to do. So I brought it up a little bit. Take this and kick Command C and copy this. So this is copy. Now I'm going to go over to this clip and hit Command Command Shift V. This is paste attributes. Now I can paste that limiter filter, and it's going to paste exactly how I set the filter for this clip to this clip here. So now I, I can just I don't have to uh, change it. In fact, I can do it to this one too. Might as well do it to that one as well. Limit. And all these clips have the audio set the same exact way now, which is perfect, exactly the way you want it. So, you know, there's only maybe one more thing you need to know. A lot of beginners, when they edit videos, they want to put effects in the clips. They want to make the clips look real cool. They have great transitions. But all of that is old school crap. You know, for the most part, you want to go very light on the effects. Simplicity is best. All right, effects are just cheesy and lame. So for the most part, you want straight cuts, and you just want to make the video look normal. That's it. So the only effects you really want to use is when you have a clip like this one here that is not white balanced. Oh, so I didn't click on it. Okay. Okay, so audio tab, so a uh, video tab rather. So a clip like this that isn't white balanced, I'm using effects to make it look normal. Those are the only effects you want to use, really. And the only other thing you might need to do is you might need to put uh, a title in your video. Like here's titles. Use simple titles. Don't use fancy ones. So I just, I'm just going to drag it in. See my my video, my computer's being slow because of the, the software I'm recording with. Now when I click the title, it opens it in the inspector, and I can, you know, type all kinds of jibber jabber in there. You know, I can increase the scale of it, whatever. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. So, you know, that and that's really about all you need to know to edit videos. Um, reading stories will make you better at it because it teaches you how to, to get your ideas out in a coherent, chronological way. So it really will make you better to read books to become a better storyteller because you're, all you're doing with video editing is telling a story with videos instead of a pen and paper. That's it. Be simple. Uh, don't use all kinds of effects. Don't use all kinds of transitions. Uh, for the most part, straight cuts are just perfectly fine. Um, make your video as short as possible. Remember, 
the more time you spend watching the video in its entirety, the better it's going to look in the end because you're going to catch more boring, repetitive, mundane stuff that can be cut from the video. You're going to catch more stuff that looks weird that you can cut out. So all you need to, to know how to do is get your clips in the, in the bin, get them from the bin into the timeline, and then just trim the clips and that's basically all you need to do and then maybe work on the color and the audio a bit and you're pretty much set. So at this point I would be exporting it. I would bring my timeline, my cursor to the beginning of the video, hit I, bring the cursor to the end of the video and hit O for in and out. Then I'm going to export the clip. Your video editor will probably be a bit different. You know, then you just go through the export settings, hit next rather um, before that, hit settings. So typically H.264 is a good format for YouTube, video and audio. Your audio is going to be AAC, uh, which is perfectly fine. And, and you would just hit next and, and title it and select the folder and save it to that. And that's about it for video editing. Uh, the basics of it for a beginner. I am going to try to do more advanced techniques in the future, more advanced audio uh, and color correcting uh, sometime in the future. But this right here will be good enough uh, for the vast bulk of your YouTube videos. And you can use practically any editing software you want. doesn't have to be professional stuff at all. So uh, spread the video around. Post it on Facebook and Twitter, whatever. Uh, I love seeing the view counts go up on my videos. I hope it has helped you to edit. And thanks for watching.